Podtacular episode 380, Halo Invades RTX, for July 4th, 2013. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Podtacular episode 380. I am Dust Storm. And I'm Brent Gamer. And we are broadcasting live right now from Austin, Texas. Uh, definitely a few technical hiccups as we try to get the live stream going. And you can probably tell right now our audio quality is a little bit different. That's because we're in our hotel room, which is very, very echoey. So the audio quality here is probably not going to be up to par as you have known it for past podcasts, but we're kind of making the best that we can right now. And we figured we'd go ahead and do a show since all well, the bulletin came out yesterday. There's some pretty good stuff in there. Uh, we were going to do this, try to do it video, but it just took way too much time and effort and we weren't prepared for it. So we're just doing this audio style, no video uh, for us right now. So maybe another future date down the line we'll have a video podcast for another, another time. But for the time being, we have some bulletin stuff to talk about. Um, as you guys know... 343 announced a Halo Summer Tournament that is going to be going through July uh, and August and they have some more details up on their bulletin regarding that and how kind of the scoring for that's actually going to happen. So there's two online qualifiers right now or sorry, there's two actual in-person qualifiers right now and one of them is at RTX this weekend. Uh, Registration actually starts tomorrow. Yes. And then there's going to be one at Gamescom in Germany. So winners of those two events are going to be qualified to go into the finals, and then there's an online version of this as well. So everyone that is not able to go to these events, you still have a chance to get into the finals and get uh, get your chance at, was it, a $200,000 first place prize? Yes, first place is uh, 200,000 smackers. So. That is freaking a lot. Like, I don't know what to do with that much money, because that's... That's basically four years of salary for me. No. That's, uh, how many X-Bones? I have no idea. Like <laughs> that's 400 a, X-Bones. That, that's a lot. That's a lot of Xboxes. So, as far as the, the online tournament goes, there's some information that come, came out about that. Um, there's gonna, it's gonna be running for 20 weeks. And for those 20 weeks... No, it can't be 20 weeks. Not that's just July and August. What was it? How many weeks did it say it was? Um... I'm not sure. Let me check. I've got it up right now. Um, you can tell I'm real Sorry, prepared it's, for this you play discussion. 20, yeah. You play 20 games per week. Sorry. I knew there was a 20 in there. I just didn't remember what it was. So you get to play 20 games a week. And I'm, I'm guessing the tournament, if they say it's July and August, I'm assuming the finals are going to be at PAX. Yeah. That'd be my best guess. Yeah. We'll so, probably end up at PAX, so that'll be a big deal. Yeah, uh, so I'll be at PAX. Yeah, I won't. Be. I won't be necessarily doing the the tournament at PAX, but yes. I'll be at PAX nonetheless. You'll be in the running for the two hundred thousand. Uh, not likely. <laughs> not likely. So the twenty actually comes from. Uh, there's an online playlist that's going to be dropped into matchmaking. At, I'm guessing on Monday. That's specifically designed for this tournament. And what you have to do is you have to play at least twenty matches to be entered in, basically for that week. And there's basically a point system, so it's FFA, it's eight players in one lobby, so it's an inverse scoring thing. So if you get first place, you get eight points, if you get second place, you get seven points all the way down the line. Once you get scored for those 20 games, the top four players that perform in that week actually are instantly registered to go to the finals. So of every week, uh, the, the people that score the highest um, have the best score based on the score that scoring system is good to go for the finals. No guarantees that you actually get there, but that's still a pretty cool way to integrate it to have basically the top four from every week. So that gives people lots of different opportunities to try to get in there. Yeah, uh, it seems to me like the only way you would get in though is if you won all twenty games and then quit. If they're running off an average, right? Because I have to imagine there's going to be a lot of people playing. And uh, if they're just going to pick the best of the best, the best of the best are obviously going to be the you know the people who won all twenty matches and got yeah. the eight points every time. So right. And another thing is, I'm assuming people can play more than twenty, and they're probably going to play more than twenty. So I'm wondering if it's the first twenty, or if it's your best streak of twenty, or if it's your last twenty. 
It says over the course of all your games, your average will be calculated. So okay, I'm thinking, so you have to have at least 20, and then it's your average. Yeah, that's what. so I'm thinking that the best possible situation you could get in is your first 20 games, you just win them and don't and play you anymore. Stop. You just stop. You just stop. Yep. That sounds like probably the way to do it. And I don't think we're going to get many people that are going to win 20 straight games of FFA in a row, unless you're like a pro going up against noobs. Oh, yeah, it's... I mean, it's like any Halo tournament. The best of the best are going to show up, especially now that $200,000 are on the line. You right. know, if you've been spending your entire life playing, you know, competitive Halo, this is your chance to finally cash in on that skill, so. Right. Well, the other thing is, a lot of the playlists, at least the new ones that come out, you get paired with so many different kinds of people. You have people that just incredibly suck, you have people that are good, and with the new playlists out there, you basically don't have any playlist CSR basis to really match people up with, so... I'm wondering if those for the few, first few weeks, if you're going to be paired up against random people, or if you're if it's going to pull from CSR from other playlists or other some other metric that we aren't really aware of yet. Well, ideally, if it's a qualifying for a tournament, uh, you would think it would just be with randoms, because if you were skill based, it would you know you would be put in with people relative to your skill. But then if you won the twenty games against people relative to your skill, you know that's different than you know, a pro Halo player winning True. 20 games against the people in his CSR level. So it would just make more sense to me to put him in with randoms, just like a regular tournament. You know, I mean, if you go into a tournament and all of a sudden, you know, I mean, like a real tournament in a live yeah. setting, if you get, you know, placed against a team who, you know, obviously kicks everybody's asses, you know, and just because you're new and got teamed up with them in the first round, I mean, you're going to lose, but that's just the way it is. That's the way tournaments run. Right. You know, the best kind of rise to the top. Well, so someone kind of brought this point up on Twitter, and while I'm, I don't exactly agree with everything that we had in the conversation with him, uh, Halo Fan for Laughs also in the stream. So, uh, yeah, I'm about to touch on something that he he's... We, we had a long discussion on Twitter about. But as far as... Uh, from his point of view, having other people be able to come in and have a balanced or fair chance of getting in there. If you just do randoms, then yeah, all the pros are going to win. There's not going to be anyone who's just a, a mediocre player to come in and have a chance. I mean, personally, I'm not I mean, too too offended with that. I mean, if you have, if you, there's good players out there, then there's good players out there, even if they're pro or not. But if, if 343 did want to give these people a chance, then there would have to be some kind of metric to pair up people based on their actual skill. Well, there'd probably have to be, you know, different tournaments, too, like different circuits. There'd be, like, the yeah. amateur circuit and then, you know, pro circuit and, you know, beginner class or whatever. Right. Uh, so you just... They, uh, they can only afford, you know... I, I think they can afford multiple tournaments, but right now, you know, logistically... They just want one tournament. They want one global world championship instead of, you know, splitting it up into different tourneys. So, I mean, I would like an amateur Halo circuit, but the problem is how do you classify who's an amateur and who is a pro? I mean, how do you become a pro? How do you get ranked as a pro player, per se, you know? Yeah, so that, that's a, just a, some things that people have made note of, and it... It's an interesting thought, but as far as like people going out there to win, if people are good at the game, then the, there shouldn't be anything from stopping them from winning, really. Oh, yeah, and this is the big tournament, too, as far oh, as yeah. you know what you can win in cash. I mean, uh, first place is 200 grand. Yeah, that's a lot of cash. For one person. Yeah. I mean, you see events like MLG, they're giving away 100 grand to a team of five. This is 200 grand going to a team of one. Yeah. This is the biggest in terms of winnings that of a Halo tournament that we've seen so far. So, and this is just for the summer, so it doesn't mean that they're not going to be doing it for other time periods down the line either. I wouldn't. I'd be surprised if they didn't. I think from the Infinity Challenge that we had back uh, a couple of months or a few months ago when they gave away the car and then the the guest spot in the next game, um, they're going to definitely have more tournaments coming out for this. I'm sure. Oh yeah. Well, I think it goes without saying that if you win the two hundred grand, uh, you should probably donate it to me. So. <laughs> if the person that wins it knows you. Oh yeah, you don't even have to know me. You just send it my way. You know, I'll be super appreciative. I'll get to know you. <laughs> I'll be your new best friend. Yeah, friend for life. So that's of course uh, going on 
over the next two months with the the first in-person qualifiers here at RTX. So that's going to be pretty interesting. I think both Brent and I are going to enter just so we can get the shirt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I was talking to Bravo today when we uh, went in and saw the the convention because uh, I have media pass. Yay! And it's it looks like a pretty sweet booth. Oh, yeah. It's a cool booth. Um... They have basically four pods with eight Xboxes in eight vanguards at each pod. So they have 32 vanguard games cases sitting with them. It's like, wow. Can I have one of those, please? <laughs> How much do those retail for? $350. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's yeah. quite a bit of cash it's, it's, put it's, up for all those vanguards. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's their product. I'm sure they just kind of get it for, like, bulk discount. Oh, yeah, <laughs> they, they get a little bit of a discount. And they get to keep them for future attorneys and stuff. It's yeah. It's not like it's just one attorney and you throw them all away. Uh, yeah. You can donate those to me, too. That would be great. <laughs> if you are if you don't want to haul all those vanguards off, you know, after RTX, you can give me a couple. Yeah. Griffball also has a booth up there, which we went by. It's, it wasn't fully set up when we went over there, but it was mostly done. It's right by the RTX booth. Yeah, looking good. Yeah, looking pretty good. They have all the swag there. They have wristbands. They have lanyards. Uh, they are giving away shirts and a couple of little things that they have. So if you're at Austin, then visit our friends over at the Griffball Hub booth. Or, well, it's the Griff Ball booth. It's not the Griff Ball Hub booth. I'll, let me correct that. It's the Griff Ball booth. So, it's pretty cool. Um, there are lots of other um, areas that weren't set up yet. I think as far as being the furthest along, the Rooster Teeth and the Griff Ball booths were like the two almost nearly done when we went by. Yeah, it's kind of a sign of their dedication. Like, they were ready to prepare for yeah. RTX. Yeah. They're, they're well, ready to rock. Well, the... The Griffball Hub folk got in yesterday just like we did. They got in a little bit earlier because uh, both of our methods of transportation were delayed yeah. <laughs> quite significantly. But we are we did get here, which is nice. So, yeah, if, if you are in Austin uh, by some chance, definitely come uh, say hi to us if you manage to find us. Uh, say hi to the Griffball folks, say hi to the Rooster Teeth folks and all that good stuff. Um, as a reminder, I do have my podcasting panel on Sunday, yes, which will be streamed live, actually. So that is Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Pacific Time, 4 p.m. Central Time on Sunday afternoon. So it will be live streamed. Um, I'm guessing Rooster Teeth has a set of uh, Twitch streams that they have. It's probably on their website by now. Um, if it's not, then they'll definitely have it up tomorrow when they start broadcasting with the opening panel. So that's going to be pretty sweet. Um, still a little nervous, still working on my slide deck. Uh, didn't start working on that until this morning. All the content's in place, though. Um, we have had several staff meetings, and everything that we've talked about, we're pretty chill with the layout of all the topics, all the things that we want to talk about. So it's just not sure how many people I'm going to be in front of, and then doing it live is just it's a little nerve wracking. It's it's one thing to be just in front of a microphone, in front of the computer, and then having knowing that people are listening to it mostly later, with the few exceptions that listen to us live. But then it's completely different. When you see, like, a pool of people watching you, like, I think the room I have it has can hold at least 400. Yeah. So, being able to see those people and then seeing other cameras setting up for a live stream, it's like, uh, okay. <laughs> you got to deal with the 400 people watching you live, and then you have to deal with the, you know, thousands of people P watching you watching online. Possibly watching online, yeah, exactly. But for those of you who do not get to watch live or are not there, we will have copies of that posted up on our websites. I think Griffball's going to host it, uh, Glipshark's going to host it, and then we're going to host it on our site as well. So you'll be able to find it if you somehow miss it, yeah. uh, to say the least. You shouldn't miss it, though. There's no excuse. So there, there's a few more details on the tournament that we can go through. Um they have some of the uh, game types and maps listing for the first couple of weeks. Yes. Uh, for week one, we have Infinity Rumble. And that's from July 15th to the 21st. Uh, the game types include Infinity Rumble, of course. Uh, the settings are custom loadouts enabled, modified personal ordnance, grenades only, and five-second respawn. Instant respawn is disabled. Custom loadouts is going to be an interesting factor. I would think that with a tournament style, you would almost have set loadouts and then have what a lot of people have been seeing as like the choice of the primary weapon that you can choose. So yeah. having the custom loadout is going to be interesting. 
Especially yeah, with the um, the tactical and the support mods that you can have. That's odd to me that they would allow that. For because, a tournament, yeah. That I doesn't mean, make much sense. You could go in with an assault rifle, theoretically. <laughs> I mean, you probably wouldn't do very well, but, I mean, you could. Uh, I guess some people might be using carbine. Um, well, it's just it's not necessarily a matter of the primary weapon that has me a little concerned or confused. It's just the other stuff, like... I mean, in competitive, you you see all control over the support the arm the support mods the tactical mod and the armor abilities. There's control over that, and with this, it's no control. Yeah. So, especially doing tournament style, it, it just seems a little odd. I mean, maybe I, I I mean this technically isn't competitive in terms of like doing AGL or MLG type settings, but um, as far as having a balanced play field with all of those other little elements in there. I'm not it's it's interesting to see that they're making this decision to keep it in there instead of taking them out. Yeah. So. Um when you think of a competition, you know, any type of sporting event, it generally it happens on a balanced playing field, you know. I mean, everybody has access to the same equipment. Uh that's what keeps the games fair. And right. this seems like maybe possibly 343 doesn't want to admit that Maybe the entire concept of custom, you know, loadouts is messed up and, you know, kind of knocks off the balance of the game. Uh, because this is a 343 hosted tournament. Uh, 343 yeah. is, you know, they control everything about this. Um, Virgin Gaming is sponsoring this, aren't they? So, I think they would be, but I really haven't seen anywhere specifically where it says they they are. Yeah. At least I haven't seen it yet. Doesn't mean I, that they're I, not. I could have swore I saw it. I could have swore I saw it somewhere. I can't find it exactly, but I think I saw something about Virgin Gaming being involved, like they were with the last tournament. And the last tournament wasn't really well received with a lot of the gaming community, uh, especially the the competitive Halo community. Uh, yeah. Okay. I just checked the portal, and it is there is Virgin Gaming at the bottom. Yeah. So as, but yeah. And three for threes even come back and said that they are taking some lessons learned from that previous tournament and trying to make it better. And so they put custom loadouts in the new one. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know either. I'm not really. I'm not going to be competing, so it doesn't matter to me. Well, uh, you will be competing well, to get the shirt. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm actually going to try <laughs> if I can. You know, I'm going to do as well in the tournament as I can, but I'm not going to qualify for the the finals at all. No, no. probably I'm not me either. I don't have nearly that much time to, to to spend on Halo, unfortunately, especially right now. Um, so what's week two got for us? Uh, for week two, we have got some SWAT. Rumble SWAT. Yes, July SWAT. 22nd to the 28th is SWAT. Uh, game types include SWAT, SWAT BRs, and SWAT rifles. Uh, that's all the info they got, so it's just SWAT. SWAT, SWAT, more SWAT. I enjoy SWAT. It's one of my favorite game types. Swat's hit or miss for me. It depends on the map. And it depends yeah. on my my mood. Because <laughs> sometimes I can get really, really frustrated by just not being able to hit anything. Or sometimes I'll, I'm freaking fire and I'll go like 20 and 7. Oh, yeah. That's, that's it's such a the hit best or miss. feeling in the world, though, when you go crazy in Swat and you get like half it the is. kills for your entire team. It is. But it's also equally frustrating when you play like crap. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, just Swat. Uh, week 3, Rumble Pro, July 29th through August 4th. The game types include Rumble Pro FFA and Slayer BRs. Uh, yep, it's it's Rumble Pro. It's kind of like, uh, not really but like Rumble Infinity Pro Rumble. Pro doesn't have... No custom loadouts in that. Yeah, so I guess the first week is just custom loadouts? Yeah, because it's Infinity Rumble. Okay. Uh, I guess well, that, makes... that might be okay. That yeah. might be okay. I mean, it's not as long like as it's, it's not throughout the whole tournament, then I guess. Yeah, and I, I kind of doubt that the finals will be uh, with Infinity Rumble. I, I yeah. don't think so. No. I think they said that last week's bulletin that they had some of the game type settings out there for that. So, so it's not really like they're okay. trashing their entire tournament. So it seems like what they're doing here is just kind of picking out the best of each kind of each one of those groups of people that played those different playlists. Because it looks like in the list that we have is pretty much the different playlists that you would play it for. in FFA. You have the Infinity um, the Infinity Rum, or, sorry, Infinity Slayer, you have the SWAT, and now there's Rumble Pro, and then the next one. 
And the next one is Rumble Grab Bag, uh, August 5th through 11th. Game types include uh, FFA King of the Hill, FFA Ball, Human Slayer, Covenant Slayer, and Forerunner Slayer. So it's starting to kind of get into the FFA objective type stuff as well. So it seems like pretty much picking out all the different things that you can do with FFA with Halo 4 and picking out the best, essentially, four in those areas yeah. for each week. So I guess it's not too bad. It's a different way of doing things. It seems a little odd, though, because you have these people who excel in their, you know, different game types, and then they all get thrown together for the finals to play probably Rumble Pro. So, I mean, guess who's probably going to win the tournament? Right. The, the people that qualified under Rumble Pro, or at the live <laughs> events. Or uh, at the live events, yeah. yeah. Well, the other thing is, too, it's a completely different atmosphere when you're doing online play versus, like, in-person play. So the people that may final for it might just buckle under pressure from having everyone there for the finals because it's a different it's a completely different game like if you if you guys watch the agl streams you see people getting up in people's faces i mean it's it's half <laughs> half skill and half a mind game at those events i could just imagine like yelling in your opponent's face like trying to get them off their game that'd be nuts isn't that one of the best things about lamp parties though is just the, yeah. the ability to sit in a room and just yell across the room to your buddy it's like i saw that <laughs> you bastard yeah <laughs> Like, if, uh, if, you, if you get assassinated, you can go up and punch the guy while you're respawning. Yeah. You can actually go <laughs> punch him in the back of the head and be like, yeah, how yeah, you like it? That's one, uh, of the, that's, <laughs> that's one of the best things about LAN parties in these events. Oh, yeah. Is, being is the ability. People. Yeah. Yeah. So. And then there's one more week. So what's uh, week yes. five? Week five is Legendary Rumble. Um, it says settings to be announced. So it's just one game type called Legendary Rumble. Um... Let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Maybe it's all bolt shots. That would be legendary. That would... Uh. No. No. Please no. <laughs> just just, just don't. <laughs> oh. So, um, those are the five weeks for the online play. And then there's... I'm guessing it's going to be the top four finalists from here, and then the top four finalists from GamesCon. Yeah. So, I'm wondering if there's going to be another set, because that's seven sets. If you wanted it to be even, there would be an eighth set. So I wonder where that would be coming from. Unless both places are are sending eight. Or it maybe this be. one's sending eight and the other one's sending four. Possibly. Or maybe vice versa. I don't know. I don't know the details about that, so <laughs> I, wouldn't, I couldn't speak to it. And then week five is August 12th through the 19th, which is ends a week before, or two weeks, bef two weeks before PAX. No, one, one week before PAX, sorry. A week and a half or, or so. So I'm guessing PAX is probably going to be where the finals are going to be held. Yeah. That would seem to be the likely case in terms of time time windows here. Well, if you win the Legendary Rumble week and... I mean, you only got like a week to prepare for the, <laughs> the finals. Well, if, they're, if you That's qualify the for the finals, being that short notice, I'm assuming they would probably fly you out. Oh, yeah. I would hope that they'd fly if all of these people If they're out. offering a $200,000 prize pool for the first, per, for the first winner... They're, they've got plenty of money to fly these people out. Oh yeah, I mean that's I mean, that's five hundred dollars. That's that's a drop in the bucket compared to two hundred grand. Right. <laughs> so, of course, um, there's also the prize listing here. So first place, of course, is two hundred thousand yeah. dollars for your salary. That'd be nice to have, wouldn't it? Yes, eight hundred thousand quarters. Uh, it's a lot of quarters. Did you do that math, really? What, four times 200,000? I mean, it's, oh, that's right. it's pretty oh, yeah, simple. That's right. I keep on forgetting quarters is just a division four. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so first is 200,000. It was the weight that we did last time. That was Yeah, we was. did the we did the weight. Uh, second, 75,000. That's still a lot of cash. So even if you don't win, you're still going to walk home with 75,000 before taxes, of course. They'll, of course. they will get a big chunk of that. Uh, third place is 10,000. Fourth is five. Fifth is four. Sixth is three thousand. Uh, uh, seventh is two thousand. They got a typo on there, and then eighth <laughs> place is one thousand. So even if you lose in eighth place, I mean, you will get one thousand dollars cash. That's pretty nice. That's not bad. Yeah. So for playing Halo, exactly. I mean, that's pretty cool. Uh, big prizes this time, though. So yeah, the 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 top two are definitely like the big ones you want to go for. Yes. So uh, if you if you want to brave yourself against going against other people, 
on Halo, then definitely try to enter the tournament. Um, I believe the online registration will open um, basically next week when the playlist opens. So just play your games, play at least 20 of them every week if you want to try to win the 200 grand and be flown out to, I guess, I'm guessing Seattle. Yeah. Because just time-wise, it seems packs, so... Well, I mean, also, 343 is right there. They exactly. can just walk over there and be like, yeah. And when, we'll when else do a lot of people come to Seattle? Of course. It's like the big one. <laughs> yeah. So. And then, of course, we have the screenshots of the week. Oh, yeah. At the bottom. Uh, it's a beloved favorite of the bulletin. Sometimes they hit, sometimes they miss. This week, it's. Uh, this was a pretty good hit. It's scenery. I mean, yeah. it's, it's hard to go wrong with scenery. Of course, you can't really. Well, I mean, you could because these people had to choose which screenshots they wanted to take and filters and things like that. But, uh, I mean, this is kind of a a way to, I don't know, show off the art of the, the developers, you know, because they take a lot of time, you know, and make these different skyboxes and the scenery around the levels look really, really good. It's kind of a showcase of that. Yeah. Uh, Vol- Volcona. Is a good one, I think. Yeah, uh, I like Color Fast. It's pretty sweet. That was. I'm, I'm wondering how they did that one because that one's pretty interesting because it looks like the background's just normal, but then the plant is rainbow. Yes, yeah, very colorful. Rainbow. So I don't know if that's a filter or just a certain way that they took the screenshot. I don't know. Tranquil and Lost are also some good ones, I think. Yes. Uh, the Fall by Biowolf, which is a, a, a friend of mine, thanks through Duquesne. Uh, that one's also pretty another another pretty good one. Yeah, these are all pretty good. Uh, there really isn't a bad one on here. No, they're they're all pretty good. Uh, this is a good week for screenshots. Yes. So that's pretty much uh, all there is to talk about the bulletin. Um, lots of stuff coming going on at RTX this week, so we'll primarily be talking about that um, as the week goes on. A couple things we're gonna check out. There's definitely lots of panels. Um, Ones I'm interested in a lot, of course, a lot of the Rooster Teeth official ones are out there. Uh, there's a couple other ones. Uh, Griffball Hub has a panel that they're doing on Griffball. There's some ones based on I think game development or game theory that you're going to. Yeah, just game mechanics and stuff like that. It's not like real game theory, uh, which is okay. you know a study of. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it, really. And I well, just game theory very... has to deal with like the algorithms and decision trees and all that stuff. Yeah, whereas this is more just game design and mechanics and stuff okay. like that. So, I mean, it's not really game theory. That's just the kind of nickname they gave their panel. Oh, so. all right. But I'm interested in game mechanics. Like, oh, yeah. that, that's something that I'll love to see. I uh, think a lot of people, I mean, this is the perfect platform to do it, too. Yeah. Uh, there's uh, other podcasts that are, have their stuff going on here as well, so... Glip Shark's doing theirs. They're a big kind of Rooster Teeth community podcast. The Internet Box has theirs. The Rooster Teeth podcast is doing theirs. Um, there's a, there's a My Little Pony panel. Oh, yeah. That sounds like something uh, something to go to. I saw a 12-year-old boy. I mean, I don't know what, how old he was. He looked about 12 or 13, maybe, wearing a My Little Pony t-shirt in one of the bus stations like in Fort Worth. And I don't know if he was coming to RTX or not. I didn't want to ask him, but I was like... <laughs> Man, Probably was. Like, it was like at the uh, the first I thought it was like hokey, and I felt bad for him. Like I'm like, you know how many people are making fun of you, and then I'm like, well, you know, screw them. If you like something, you shouldn't have to apologize for it. You know, mm-hmm. you know, screw the haters. Right. So I mean, if you like Halo, you like Halo. If you like My Little Pony, you like My Little Pony. Yeah. If you like Barbies, you like Barbies. Well, that might be different. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's I mean, it's lots of different things going on around here, yeah. which, is, which is good. Um, I believe Freddie Wong has a panel that he's doing, or he's a guest on a panel. I'm not exactly sure. Um, oh, we we forgot to mention, um, three four three is having a panel. Yes, this weekend. Um, we missed that in the bulletin, but that one's uh, I believe tomorrow, or sorry, not tomorrow, uh, Saturday at two thirty. Or the, uh, I yeah, I think it's Saturday at two thirty. So definitely going to be checking that one out. Uh, probably get front row seats. Possibly. Hope so. Well, just making sure we got to get a hold of BS Angel first. Yeah. So uh, she got in today. She's here in Austin now as of, I think, about an hour ago, which is pretty cool. Uh, lots of different people coming in um, that at least I know and lots of people that Brent will get to know 
Yeah. Uh, Steptoe is coming. Steptoe's coming. That's cool. Um, Jen Taylor is coming. Yeah. Of course. Uh, yep. Cortana. Lots of people. Lots of people coming. Cortana. Um, <laughs> so just a, a bunch of cool Halo related folks are going to be here in Austin. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to meet them. I already met Bravo. That was mm-hmm. a, a special moment. <laughs> well, Frankie's going to be here for yeah. the panel. So Frankie will be here. Frankie. That's cool. So lots of different Halo personalities that are, that are going to be here. Um, I'm really excited. Oh, yeah, me too. Really excited. Other than that, I pretty much, I think we're, we've talked to, to a lot of stuff that we can talk about. I mean, mostly it's just the bulletin that came out yesterday, detailing with the Halo tournament, and then we're here for RTX. Yeah. So we'll be definitely going around, hopefully getting some interviews done, getting some recording, probably some late night recordings done with some people. Uh, so we'll see what we can get for you guys. Definitely taking lots of pictures and all that good stuff as well. We have a party tonight, actually, that we're going to. Yes. Um, Assuming I don't get bounced out for not being cool no, enough. You I got bounced out of the the uh, convention center earlier while they were setting up because I didn't have uh, the proper credentials. I didn't have the right badge. Well, you weren't the only one. Yeah, but I'm just sad. Uh, no, no, we we we've, we've it, you're set to go. I emailed them and they're like, okay, all right, he's good. So that's fine. Yeah, as long as they just don't let. They're not like, yo, man, you you ain't famous <laughs> enough on the internet. We can't let you in. No, so it's it's Ruth Rooster Teeth. It's it's for their special guests and for media and all that stuff. So cool. Um, that's going to be at a hotel and probably. I'm assuming the place we're asking to have a good view of fireworks because it's from eight to eleven. Yeah, and fireworks usually go off at nine. Yeah, so uh, I, th- I think they probably picked that location on purpose. Probably. Uh, so it's going to be fun. It's gonna be sweet. It's going to be lots of fun. I will probably be hanging around the uh, Halo booths and the Griffball booths um, throughout the times I'm not at panels this weekend. Um, what, do you, what do you plan on going around seeing? Uh, in terms just of like the, the, what's on the show floor? I'd probably just look around at all the different booths, try to get around to everybody. Uh, probably skip some of the stuff I don't care about. Probably won't be at the My Little Pony panel or any, <laughs> you know, brony type gathering. Um, just stuff like that. Probably look around at some of the t-shirts and stuff, see if I see something I like to take home. I don't really have many swag. gaming t-shirts anymore, so I need a gaming t-shirt of some sort. Lots of swag to pick up here. Oh, yeah. Swag. Swagtastic. We've already got, uh, I guess we could talk about them. Uh, Rooster Teeth mm-hmm. playing card decks that oh, they yeah. came out with. Uh, so everybody that comes out to RTX and gets registered, uh, they get the swag bag that comes with a cool pack of Rooster Teeth playing cards. So, indeed, we may tweet one of the, we, we can tweet that out later. Yeah, I think. Do you think that uh, Rooster Teeth could start like their own collectible card game, like some sort of TCG or CCG? Like I, mean, I don't know. I how guess they... I could. I don't know how. How would you exactly do it? Like, would you just do it around RVB characters, or would you do it around, like, the office staff, or, or what? Well, I mean, you could do that, or, like, I was thinking, since they like going off and doing, you know, new ventures all the time, it could be its whole, the whole new thing, you know? They could Something make their on Minecraft. Own, like, <laughs> like an original property. Um, Possibly. That would be cool. You don't see many cool TCGs anymore. Not really. Um, Pokemon's still big, I know that. But I've... Yeah. Pokemon for me is just the Game Boy games, to be yeah. honest. The cards, I, I have no idea what's going on with Pokemon cards. I played them back in the day, but now they've come so out I. with like Pokemon EX cards and EX trainers and EX trainer item stadiums and like. Yeah, <laughs> I have a deck I've been meaning to try to, or I have a sh- two shoebox fulls of Pokemon cards I've been trying to sell. Yeah. Or well, I haven't been trying yet. I need to sell. Um, but not a Pokemon podcast, Halo podcast. Yep. But I had to get that in there. It's a, it's not really a podcast with me in it if I don't get a little bit of Pokemon injected in there somehow. Yeah, well, I mean, that that's kind of our, like, secondary objective here is Pokemon. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, I do have Pokemon here at RTX, so uh, if you're here in Austin, uh, I've got to buy my uh, charger for my 3DS because I forgot it. But I brought Pokemon Black and White, so if you want to battle, come find me. <laughs> All right. Uh, one other piece of news. Uh coming over from HBO, at least for us, was that Halo 4 is actually has an interesting title associated to it now. It's now the most selling, within its first year, Microsoft Studios game. Yeah, it, it's a weird statistic. Yeah, it's, it's weird, but... It's got a lot of qualifiers, and that's why it's not yeah. really impressive. Because, first of all, it's, it's 
in, just for Microsoft Game Studios. So it's not the entirety of Xbox, because I assume the best-selling game on Xbox is Call, Call of Duty, Duty, Modern Warfare, something or another. Uh, so it's Microsoft Game Studios, and it's not even, like, lifetime totals. It's first just year. for the first launch year. So Halo 4 sold more in its launch year than any other Microsoft Game Studios game. Well, it's interesting, too, because we still have four months to go before we even reach the end of the first year. Yeah, so... I wonder what that means. I don't know. I, I really have no idea. Uh, I, I will say I know I'm a purchaser of four of those copies of Halo. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it makes sense, though. This isn't, it's not really uh, surprising that Halo 4 would be the biggest Halo launch. Uh, so, you know, because everybody knows about Halo 1, 2, and 3, and then Reach, and then the new one comes out, and it's a big deal because it's actually a numbered Halo, and we thought we were never going to get another numbered Halo ever again. I mean... It, well, no, I think a lot of people thought that they were going to keep on with the numbers. I, I think a lot of people wanted them to keep along with the numbers and not come up with random, crazy titles like some of the other games do. Yeah. Uh, I'm just talking about that kind of weird period between Bungie announcing that they were moving on to do their new Destiny stuff with mm-hmm. Activision and really understanding what 343 Industries was. Because for a, the period there, the 343 was a very small team of, you know, like, I think it was just, it wasn't even BS Angel at the very first. She was one of the, one of like probably the first 20, but, you know, at the beginning it was Frankie. Yeah, it was um, Frankie, um, Kiki, uh, Allison Stroll, uh, a few of those people, and then, um, I think BS Angel was definitely one of the earlier people to come yeah. on board, though. And they were mostly just managing content from Waypoint, and they were probably starting the studio up then and trying to find people, but there wasn't any big announcements at that point that they were going to continue the franchise. They were just kind of taking over. And that's when Halo Legends was developed and came out, and then we had the the data drops from Oni to kind of bridge that gap between what happened in the Reach game and then what happened in the book, and kind of a lot of external fiction management of the franchise, and then it wasn't until the Halo 4 announcement when we actually saw more details into actually coming back to games. Yeah. So, uh, we made it. 343 made it. Yeah. Uh, you know, considering it was their first game, like, I, I give 343 a lot of leeway as to, you know, the kind of criticism I'm, I'm willing to shell out at Halo 4. Halo 4 is a good game. It's, it's not a a terrible game by any stretch of the imagination. It's, right. it's fun. Uh, they added some stuff that I didn't enjoy. And hopefully they've they've learned from uh, the community feedback. So, uh, Halo 5, I completely expect to be a better game than, than Halo 4. Yeah, I, I think, think by a long shot, Halo 5 is going to be a lot better. Because we have seen that they're listening to people, especially now with the feedback that they have from Halo 4 and not necessarily getting the feedback they were probably looking for. And seeing that the ch- decisions that they made early on in terms of building development teams and scrapping builds and stuff was not the right ideas to, to go with. So hopefully they're taking a lot of that stuff that they have learned from and, and gleaned on and apply that to Halo 5. And now that they have an established team and probably hopefully now people know how to work with each other a lot better, hopefully now we're going to see a product that's worthy of a, like, Halo title that's like oh, yeah. of the current generation. <laughs> well, I'm kind of worried now because they're not calling the next game Halo Five. Yet. It's Halo Five. It's Halo X Bone. It's right Halo now. Five. It's Halo Five. Uh, but why? I did. It's probably Halo Five. I'm not arguing with you, but I don't understand. If it is Halo Five, why don't you just tell people? I mean, it's not like it's a big shocker. You're not going to be like spoiling anything. It's just why? a marketing ploy at this point. It's that's all it is. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I just I mean don't understand big, it. I don't... big bloggers are still calling it Halo Five, and yeah, but... I'm I'm not I'm still not afraid to call it Halo Five. Yeah, there's the whole mystery of yeah they didn't officially come out and say it was Halo Five, and all that stuff. But I mean, clearly in the sand there was the mark of the five, and only the L and O were showing, and the H and A weren't. So it's it's probably one of those things where like PR was like, well, we don't want to really say it quite yet. And we want to. S- <laughs> there are some other things that are coming in the pipeline that we don't want to talk about yet. So we're just going to say it's Halo on the new Xbox. Yeah. 
It's, it's just a big marketing thing at this point, I think. I, I don't understand it. I mean, usually when you market something, though, you want to make people get excited about a product. And this, I mean, it, it's, it just doesn't make well, sense. So, I mean, so look at what Microsoft just did with Xbox One. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, call I mean, it, it, it wasn't necessarily the, the best move either. So, no. I mean, the decision to do it that way with, with Halo, that could have been a, more of a Microsoft thing than a 343 thing. So... Who knows what with the Microsoft PR right now, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, none of this is going to matter after they do a real trailer for it. You right. Know, like a, that was more of a teaser to but me. But that was, I mean, to be honest, that was a kick-ass teaser. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying it was I mean, Jedi Master lame. Chief, right? <laughs> uh, sweet. I mean, maybe to them. I mean, to me, Halo 5 will be 343's Empire Strikes Back, possibly. I mean, that's the hope. You know, this is the one where they finally understand what makes their franchise great, and they just take all those elements and bring them together in a way that the community will enjoy. Uh, so, yeah. I can see how they would get some sort of Star Wars references going on. I mean, I'm, I'm probably not the first one to call it their Empire Strikes Back. Everybody's second installment of whatever they're working on is the Empire Strikes Back of whatever, so... Right. <laughs> so this is going to be... I think Halo 5 is going to be, hands down, one of the best Halo games out there. And personally, right now... I I really enjoy Halo 4. Someone asked me the other day what my favorite game was in terms of story and in terms of multiplayer. And in, in terms of multiplayer, I actually said Halo 4 because I, I do enjoy the Halo 4 multiplayer experience, even though there are some things that are kind of broken with it. But for me, I, I really didn't start Halo until Halo 3 on the console. And I was bad at Halo 3. Like, I got stomped. On Halo 3 badly. Like, I, I go back and try to play Halo 3 sometimes. I'm still bad at Halo 3. Halo Reach, I was better. But Halo 4 is is has been the game that I've been able to play the best. And for me, is more enjoyable. And especially when you go play with friends. And, I mean, my my view on it is slightly jaded. Because I did start later in the, the history of the franchise. I didn't really start gaining acknowledgement or really diving into the community that much until Halo Reach. Yeah. So Halo 4 for me has just been the the best Halo experience and that's kind of what drives the multiplayer is the experience you get. So Halo 4 for me, I mean, I know a lot of people like Halo 2 and I'm pretty good at Halo 2 on, I, I was good at Halo 2 on the Xbox before it, they decided to close the service down for that and when I go play Halo 2 Vista, I'm pretty good on that too. So if I was around the Halo 2 days, I would probably be pretty good at Halo, but it wasn't until Halo 3 until I came around and started playing, so Halo 4, for me, is the defining multiplayer experience. Oh, yeah. I can see that. Um, I definitely do respect that there are elements in there that suck, and I wouldn't mind seeing some of those go as well. <laughs> for me, I, I understand the history of Halo, even though I do under I enjoy Halo 4 the most in terms of personal experience. At this point, you know, after all the updates, the only problem I really have with the game still is just... The the move away from vehicles as being a... Yeah, that's a big one that I want to see kind of pulled back into perspective for Halo 5 is vehicles are there to be powerful. They're there to kind of give you a significant edge on the playing field. And when you can just take out a vehicle with a overcharged plasma pistol and a plasma grenade, it pulls it down to just a, just a mobile machine gun yeah. and, and that transport of, of the flag like you'd spend literally like four hours on coagulation playing capture the flag because of vehicle control because of vehicle domination and I, I know it doesn't necessarily work for matchmaking but that needs to be taken into account for the custom games and vehicle dominance needs to be kind of put back in there and they they kind of brought it back a little bit with their latest title update but there's still a lot well not necessarily a title update with what they did with the changing the, the power of what the game types and stuff, but there's a lot of stuff that they can do to help bring kind of the former glory of the vehicles back into Halo, I think. Leave them destructible. I mean, don't make them indestructible, but make it to where they can actually stand their own for a good while. Well, well and a, b- a big part of that is not making the plasma pistol a starting weapon. Yeah. That would, uh, fix, that would fix that problem right out, is if you take out the plasma pistol as a starting weapon and make it a pickup item, like it was for Halo 3, then you're perfectly fine. You're a lot better off. Halo 3 vehicles, in my opinion, were probably some of the best. I enjoyed them. In terms, in terms of, of balanced out. Now, I would like to see the rocket launcher be able to auto-lock on all vehicles instead of just air vehicles. 
Uh, that was the way it was in um, Halo 2, I think. You could auto-lock on to any vehicle. anything, yeah. Yep. So, it was Halo but I, I really didn't enjoy that part about Halo 2, being able to lock on. Like, it, it was kind of like the EMP effect is nowadays, where it takes away a little bit of the functionality, but still, you had to go find the rocket launchers, right. and there's usually only one on the map. I mean, now everybody can just spawn with plasma pistol and point it at you, and, I mean, you're... Yeah dead in the water at that point so <laughs> and there there are like it's weird because with game evolution it, it seems like you would want certain things to get involved like get integrated into the franchise like sprinting for example i am a i am for sprinting all the way there's a lot of people out there that want sprinting gone even if you're like getting shot and stuff i think the system that they have for sprinting in halo 4 is perfect you can sprint you should be able to sprint you're a freaking spartan for crying out loud yeah. You're freaking modified down to your genetic level, and you should be able to run as fast as you possibly can. And then if you're getting shot, yeah, you slow down. That makes sense. You're getting shot, you you stumble a bit. That makes perfect sense to me. So I, for the people that complain about the sprinting system in Halo 4, you guys are crazy. Yeah, I don't complain about it. I really haven't even seen a whole lot of criticism about sprint. I, I understand I mean. the criticism in Halo Reach for sprint. For running around corners, but with how they have in Halo 4 where you slow down, it's perfectly fine, I think. And, I mean, you can go even further in saying, if you have shields, you shouldn't slow down, because the shields obviously take the impact for you. So, I mean, you can even modify that a little bit further and say, don't start slowing down until you're actually getting physically shot, and not your shields. Yeah, I mean, that's not how it works. It's, it's if you get shot at all, you slow down, but... Um, there's lots of different balancing things that they can do with the game, um, and... There's going to be some... I have a feeling for Halo 5, there's going to be some regression of stuff that we've seen come out of Halo 4 that they're going to probably backpedal on. It's like, okay, this is an interesting idea, but we're not going to do it anymore. Kind of how like they've done... With, Halo 5. Kind of how like they've done with dual wielding. Yeah. So, it's... And I wonder if how many people actually understand how complex and how complicated doing that kind of thing is for a franchise, because it's like... In reality... If someone were to do it, it would make sense. But in terms of gameplay balance, it doesn't. So where do you balance like reality of a game versus balancing the gameplay to where it's even across the board? I kind of subscribe to the rule of fun on that one. Like, anytime there's two different game mechanics, you can have one that's realistic and unfun, like not very fun at all or just aggravating, or you could have a similar mechanic that is actually fun and not aggravating and makes the experience more enjoyable. You just always go with more fun over more realistic. Well, I mean, I mean that, that that goes off of the what Bungie does with their games. They make games that they want to play. They don't make games to necessarily appeal to a wide audience, on like Microsoft did with Halo Four. They make a game that they want to play, and and while those games may not like sell like as big or as much, they're more successful, and you rely on the community to get that news out. Yeah. I mean, you don't. The the stuff that Mark, the 343 did with Halo 4 was stuff that you would do to sell it to the masses. And that's what Microsoft is in the business, is in the business of doing, is selling it to the masses. It's not necessarily keeping players in the game. It was selling to the masses. Yeah. And unfortunately, since 343 is directly affiliated with Microsoft, there there's some of that kind of turnover with the game. And, I mean, I think as long as 343 is affiliated with Microsoft, we're going to see a lot of that kind of influence on the game. And Halo is not going to be able to as attain the glory that it had before with Bungie, I don't think. I, they could prove me wrong. And if they do, then I'll be more than happy for it. But they have to. Microsoft has to let 343 have kind of like free reign over everything, even marketing. Well, the trick is to find ways to improve the game that everybody can enjoy, you know. And, and well, the thing is, not guys. everyone's going to enjoy everything. Well, I mean, not everybody. I'm just saying the for the majority of players, like it, uh, you have to find what is most fun for you know eighty percent of the players at any given time. You know, well, not but just see that's what they did. They 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 made an experience that was going to be appealing to the masses right at the start, and then people dwindled off very quickly. I mean, within, I think it was like three or four months, the populations in Halo 4 were less than it was than Halo Reach after that same amount of time period. I mean, it, it just staggered off com 
like really, really quickly. The thing is, you have to get a lot of the people that are willing to stay in the game, willing to spread it out, involved and engaged with it, and then rely on those people to get the word out that, hey, this is a great game, come play. Um, you, can't of... re- you can't rely on marketing to keep people in a game. You have to rely on other people playing the game and the communities that are out there and really focus on building the experience for the 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 core audience because that core audience will build out. Yeah. I see what you're saying. It's it, in, in my opinion, it's more lasting. Yeah. So. All right. I think that's enough ranting for us. Uh, anything going on in the chat room over there, Brent? Um... No, not really. Everybody's talking about um, Sprint. Well, not everybody was talking about Sprint. Nuclear Ovens said that, I don't know about Sprint, it forces maps to be built around it and also makes forgers take Sprint into consideration. I don't think Sprint is that much of a consideration as Jetpack is. A lot of people complain more about the Jetpack. I don't think Sprint's something that you really need to account for in a map. Really. Well, I mean, you do have more mobility. I yeah, guess. I mean, but... You... The, the speed with which you could capture a flag is, you know, faster because obviously you can get over there faster. And get, Well, I mean, 3 for 3 is in the business of making Halo faster but, and faster and faster anyways. Oh, yeah. Um, really, I wish they would slow it down a little bit. But the jetpack seems to me like a bigger, like you were saying, it, it has a bigger impact on map building and forging and stuff like that. I right. really, if they take out the... The jetpack and the EMP effect from the plasma pistol, like, that'd be my kind of halo. I'd be good to go. Well, yeah, the EMP effect is, yeah, that's one that's going to be debated for a while. So, it's an interesting effect, but, I mean, would it actually do that in real life, though? Well, I mean, I don't 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 care about whether or not it's realistic. I just don't like it because it ruins gameplay flow. Like, I, I don't like the idea of somebody spawning in front of me. While I'm driving a warthog and knowing that they probably have a plasma pistol on them, and <laughs> yeah, I mean, a big again, big thing to change that. Don't make it a weapon yeah. that you can choose. Yeah, they can either take the EMP effect out, or they can make it to where you just can't spawn a plasma pistol. But... And active camo needs to go out as uh, something you can choose too. Yeah, that they need to bring power ups back. Yeah. What happened to you know that was one of the best parts of Halo back in Halo One and Halo Two. You'd find the. Mm-hmm. Uh, Think well, they're, they're still in the game. You can you can still like put out overshield and active camo like in customs, but but I mean just take active camo out from the loadouts, put it in as right. A, you know, bring back the overshield and well, that's what MLG did with Reach. Is they took I mean you wouldn't have the armor ability of camo. You would just go and pick up the active camo power up. I think they need to do that with Halo. They need to get rid of <clears throat> or they need to really slim down and focus what the tactical and support mods are going to be in the armor abilities, and then have those big game-changing ones actually something on the map. Don't make those as, as a part of a loadout. No. Like, the <clears throat> the one where, the, the you're, if you're on a mounted machine gun, where it doesn't overheat as quickly, that's a good support mod, in my opinion. The, um, the reload faster, that one is a good one, in my opinion. But, like... Grenade pickup should be something that's default. Yeah. For for one thing. Because I mean that doesn't make any sense no. at all. <laughs> I mean that's always been in Halo. Why restrict that kind of use? You can't pick him up. You, you, your Spartan is not strong enough. He has to have the armor mod. <laughs> I'm wondering if that. I mean, because they were already restraining on resources on d- displaying stuff in Halo Four. I wonder if that was one of the things where it's like, okay, we don't want to have necessarily these extra grenades just flying around. Because I mean, you know, if, if you're in a big battle, you're gonna have tons of different grenades just sitting on the floor and that does take up resources. So I wonder if that was one of the things like, okay, we're going to cut this out a little bit and we're going to throw it in as a support mod in order to pick up grenades and just have it embedded in the body. Yeah. <laughs> but the, yeah, there's lots of things that they need to like cut back on and then be careful with how they move forward in the future. So. I think that <clears throat> pretty much wraps up for us tonight. <clears throat> um... I'm here for my panel on Sunday, so that's gonna be that's gonna be good. Yeah, check that out, live stream. Um, we will be tweeting out, of course, the stream when when it's about to come up. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, again, if you are in Austin, uh, definitely come uh, drop by, say hi to us. We'll be on the show floor throughout most of the weekend, so definitely um, if you see us, say hi. 
we do have Podtacular shirts, so we will be wearing those on Sunday at least. Mm-hmm. I will have some other shirts, shirts I'm wearing. I'm wearing going to be wearing my Griff Ball shirt on s- Saturday, I think, because that's when the Griff Ball panel is. When it, whichever day the Griff Ball panel is, I'll be wearing my Griff Ball Hub t-shirt. And then I have a couple other uh, Halo shirts. I have a 343 shirt that I'll wear um, when I'm ever, whenever I'm around the, the Halo booth helping out. So I look somewhat official. Cool. <laughs> um, but other than that, um, sorry for the live stream people for taking so long and not exactly getting what you were looking for in terms of a video stream. Um, but we do have the podcast out, at least for you guys, talking about the bulletin and whatnot. So, again, thanks for uh, putting up with us. We appreciate appreciate. It. How many do we have in there right now? Uh, right now we have seven. Oh, not bad. Well, myself included, so that's six. No, that's still. That's Wait, five. Never mind. Thank you. That, <laughs> it's going down, 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 down. So no, we got six. Cool. So sweet. So again, thanks, guys. Um, we will be doing podcasts throughout the weekend. They will not be live, likely. No. So uh, we will be doing interviews and stuff. I know Brent will want to get an interview with Jen Taylor. Hopefully. So if I can get out any other words in your record, <laughs> I think you'll be fine. So. Um, but for you guys to know, this is the second time Britt and I are actually, um, have seen each other. The first time was MLG Dallas in 2009, and this is the second time that we've, uh, met up. So this is, uh, this is exciting for us to, yeah. to be in the same room podcasting for, um, a second time, really. Yeah. So pretty cool. I'm excited. I'm excited too. All right. So. You can check us out on podtacular.com. While you're there, send us an uh, email. You can do that via the green button on the site or send it directly to us at submissions at podtacular.com. Or you can leave us a voicemail at 240-200-HALO. That's 240-200-4256. So anything that you have in terms of what we talked about today, of course, any of the bulletin information, any questions on the Halo 4 tournament, and especially this weekend with being RTX, we'll be checking our emails regularly, checking our voicemails regularly. So if you have something that you guys want asked, to any of the stuff uh, or any of the staff at 343 that are here, any of the Rooster Teeth staff, anyone at Griffball Hub, anyone that's here and all that you guys know of, definitely shoot us an email, send us a tweet, drop us a line, and we'll try to get your questions answered. Um, So shoot those our way. We'll be tweeting, uh, sharing pics and whatnot as well. So keep up to date on all that stuff. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, uh, like us on Facebook, and do all the other social media stuff. Uh, remember, we do our broadcast for our podcast usually at thir- on Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, this week's a little bit different, of course, because we're in Austin, Texas, and we have a party to go to, which kind of overlaps that time frame that we would normally record. Yep. So, I figure we get this one out a little bit early, and you guys can enjoy the news about the Halo 4 tournament that I'm sure... Some of you guys will not be joining, <laughs> or the majority of us that actually have real lives. Yeah. But for those that do, good luck to you guys. Um, if you run into the pros, sorry. <laughs> but that's just kind of the fact of life of how this tournament is going to be run. So, thanks again for tuning in to us. Uh, we will be back again uh, at some point. We'll probably be releasing an episode probably on Monday or Tuesday of compiled stuff that we have from over the weekend. Yeah. So, So. all right. Thanks again, guys, for tuning in, and we will see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Keep on fragging RTX. Well, we'll be doing plenty of it. Yep.